Mrs. Cannell, and I'm so happy and excited that you came to learn with me today. We're going to have a math-tastic lesson. Today, we're going to learn about something called elapsed time. Not lapsed time, but elapsed time. So, what does elapsed time even mean? Well, elapsed time means the time that has passed by from the beginning of an activity or event until the end of that activity or event. The time or minutes that have passed by in between. That's what elapsed time is. For example, let's say after school I started my homework at 3 o'clock and I finished at 3.45. The minutes that have gone by in between my start time of 3 o'clock and my end time of 3.45, that's elapsed time. The time to pass by while I was busy doing my homework. Elapsed time is something that happens in our everyday life all the time. Here are some other examples of elapsed time that happened during your day. Hmm. Think about that baseball game that you went to after school to see your brother hit a home run. While you were there watching the game and eating food from the concession stand, some time went by. That's called elapsed time. Think about those chocolate chip cookies you baked with grandma over spring break. From the time that you put them in the oven until the time they came out ready to eat, yummy. That's elapsed time. Hmm, mom, what's for dinner? When I started eating dinner until I finished eating dinner, that's elapsed time. Oh, I'm so tired. I should really go to bed. Until I wake up in the morning, you guessed it, that's elapsed time. See, it's all around. It happens all day long. What are some activities or events that you can think of that happen during your day that would be examples of elapsed time? Go ahead and think. What's that you said? You can tell me. Yeah, that's it. That's a great one. Exactly. I knew you could think of your own example. Well, I've got a little situation that I think I might need your help with to figure out elapsed time. Are you ready? Come on, let's go check it out. Hey guys, what you doing? We're playing Multiplication War. Ooh, that sounds fun. Want to take a break and watch a movie? Yeah, that sounds great. Are you guys ready for the movie to start? Yeah, I'm ready to watch Scoo. Okay boys, the movie's over. Man, that sure was a good movie. Yeah, but how long have we been watching this movie for? Let's check the clock. Now that the movie is over, we can figure out the elapsed time, or the time that passed by while we were watching the movie Scoob. The first thing I like to do is draw a graphic organizer or table to help me keep track of the things that I already know and the things that I need to figure out. This is where I like to write the start time. This is where I'll write the end time. And this is where the elapsed time will go. 
The start time of the movie, if you were paying attention, was 2.30. And if you caught a glimpse of the clock at the end of the movie, you'll notice it was 4.05 when the movie ended. So the elapsed time is the unknown portion of the movie that we need to figure out. The strategy I like to use best to help me figure out elapsed time is a timeline. I'll put the start time here and the end time at the end of the number line. The thing about a number line is people can group or chunk the minutes and hours in the way that best works for them. I prefer to start by going to the next whole hour. The next whole hour after 2.30 would be 3.30. That represents one hour of elapsed time. Next, I'll see if I can go to 4.30, but the movie finished before 4.30 came around on the clock. I can't make it to 4.30. So I need to readjust my thinking and maybe now I'll go to the nearest minutes. After 3.30, I'll jump to four o'clock because that's a nice even chunk of time on the clock for me. That's 30 minutes of elapsed time. Now I'll go to 4.05. From four o'clock to 4.05, is five minutes of elapsed time. Now you can see in an organized way how the elapsed time between 2.30 and 4.05 is one hour and 35 minutes. One hour and 35 minutes passed by or we could say was the amount of elapsed time between the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie. Another way you may want to consider is to try a T-chart. It works much in the same way, but just looks a little different. If I want to create a T-chart, I would still make a graphic organizer to show the start and end time of the movie, 2.30 and 4.05. We're still trying to figure out what was in between. That was our elapsed time or time that passed by. To make a T-chart, I like to show the start time and then the elapsed time. That helps me figure out what was in between. 2.30 was my start time, and just like on the number line, I'm going to jump to the next full hour of 3.30. I will then go to 4 o'clock, and last from 4 o'clock to 4.05. This is a difference of 30 minutes. This is a difference of 5 minutes. And don't forget the hour that passed by originally. You can still see how it's broken into one hour and 35 minutes. Again, each person thinks differently and it's okay if you chunk your minutes or time differently than I did. You may even want to start with minutes instead of hours it just depends on how you're thinking about the problem. To give you a better idea of what it looks like on the clock, we showed on the number line that from 2.30 to 3.30 was the next whole hour or 60 minutes around on the clock. Then we used minutes. We made the clock go from 3.30 to 4 o'clock. Lastly, we moved from 4 o'clock to 4.05. That shows the hour and 35 minutes of elapsed time that passed by 
while we were enjoying the movie Scoob. I hope you learned a little bit more about elapsed time today from our lesson. It was so good to have you join me today. See you next time. Bye!